519 in Cape Hill. It is Go Katie with Ken Romero and Dr. John. And John, joining us in the studio is Caitlin Graham. Good to have you with us today. Thanks for having me. Hey, listen, I knew this was going to be a problem with the public defender's office. I mean, when you cut off the money, you start running into problems. Right. And, it, you know, with the Lafayette Bar Association and this whole public defender's office, a lot of people who have never been in trouble may not know that if you don't have a lawyer, you've seen it on Law and Order enough. They appoint a lawyer for you. Right. But what happens if there's no money to pay the lawyers? What do we do now? Right. That's that's the situation we find ourselves in now. So what's happening um, at this point is we have over 2,300 men and women in the 15th Judicial District. So that's Lafayette, Acadia, and Vermilion Parishes uh, without a lawyer. So 2,300 without a lawyer, uh, 220 of those people are incarcerated. So they're in jail with no lawyer, no advocate on their behalf. And uh, right now what's happening is they've been put on a wait list. Um, while we're kind of in the midst of this public defender budget crisis, uh, but that wait list is growing, you know, exponentially every day. Um, so we're, it's a really, really difficult situation for everybody. Um, but especially for those clients who, you know, are faced with, with charges, they, you know, a lot of people have never had an experience like this before. And it's, it's a very scary experience, a very, you know, vulnerable position to be in. Um, so to be going through this process without a lawyer by your side, you know, I, it's kind of unimaginable, but that is what's happening right now. Um, I wouldn't want to go through that even with a lawyer by my side. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know John has been through it without a lawyer before. Well, I mean, Caitlin, I mean, to be fair, uh, most of my family members from Arkansas certainly have. But my question really was this, you know, Louisiana has been in trouble about this issue before because this isn't something that is an optional service. This is right. hard wired into our Constitution. The Sixth Amendment, in fact, guarantees you the right to a lawyer. So at some point, the issue is beyond just providing the service here. This can have repercussions further down the line. That's absolutely right. Um, and, you know, Lafayette isn't unique in having these budget crises uh, with the public defender's office. Uh, New Orleans is having a similar problem. And in fact, um, the ACLU has already uh, started to bring suit against the Orleans public defender's office for their restriction of services, which is really just a fraction of uh, what our restriction of services looks like. So you're absolutely right. This is a Sixth Amendment violation, and it is being committed by the thousands at this point. And it, it's one of those things, you know, the Constitution mandates it. And like so many things mandated by the federal government, it's kind of like it's up to the states to find the funding. Mm -hmm. And the Louisiana legislature, I think, has just been just completely whacked the last at least eight years. Bobby Jindal's blown a billion dollar surplus and i think he ought to be held criminally responsible but that's another discussion <laughs> just, just well hopefully he won't need a public defender <laughs> hopefully he would i think it would be great if he had a public defender that way he'd know what it feels like right john you look like you you've got a question in your well i mean it's, i don't have any questions about bobby jim <laughs> uh but the, but i guess the issue is this you know this is one of those areas that's difficult to make the case to the public in general because the right. public in general hears Oh, you're going to waste state resources on people who are guilty. Well, hold on a second. These are people that, one, have not been convicted of a crime. And number two, even if they have been, they still have a right to a process to make sure their rights are protected and their rights are as important whether they're convicted or not convicted. That, that's absolutely correct. And I think, you know, it has to be said that those 2,300 people are innocent people. They are innocent people until they are proven guilty. So right now, you know, they they are innocent and we need to treat them as such. Um, so, right, this isn't just, uh, you know, it's it's difficult, I think, to get people on board with um, with the public defender's office and supporting, you know, what we do. But the reality is, you know, we are all one bad decision away from being in that position. We are all one false allegation away from being in that position. So, you know, the the. There really is no us and them. It's just us. And we're all very vulnerable to being exactly where they are now. Um, and it, it, that needs to be kept in mind. But I think that's very easy for, for people to forget. Caitlin Graham from the Lafayette Bar Association and the judicial 15th Judicial District Public Defender's Office is with us today. And, you know, we're discussing the fact that the Louisiana budget crisis is impacting so many people who are incarcerated or people who may be incarcerated now, at the beginning of this, and I don't want you to make comments on something somebody else said, but if I remember correctly, Paul Marx said people that were already incarcerated would be served, but after that, there would be no service. Is is that really what's going to happen, or are we talking about now? Right now, um, there are 
221 people who are incarcerated without a lawyer. And the reason for that is because we have had to lay off or fire 35 out of 52 of our lawyers in the past two months. Right. So we're, and um, a lot of the folks who were, fu- were, who were fired are contract attorneys and they handle conflict cases. So cases that the public defender's office can't handle because there's a conflict of interest that, that precludes us from handling that case. Um, you know, mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, and this is really sort of the macro level question on this. One of the things that I've always been concerned about in our public defense systems, you know, statewide, is that very similarly to the way Mississippi is set up, the way Arkansas had been set up, is that we've got this mixed model where you have you have some full time staff, you have some that are part time staff, then you got this hybrid system like we have in the Lafayette area, and then the bulk of the state in terms of geography, being a contract system. Is there any effort in order to streamline costs, efficiency of services, to go to a single model so that we don't have, because this is really, I think, uh, feeding into the, uh, the, the myth that we're just wasting a ton of money by having this inefficient system. Right. No, I think you're right. And I think uh, Paul Marx has, since he has become the, the, Uh, chief defender in the 15th has been moving away from the contract system and moving into um, uh, as many full-time positions as possible, because I think that is the most efficient way um, to do this work is to have folks who only do public defense work. They don't take private clients. um, So that way, you know, all of their public defender clients are are being prioritized. However, there is a need to have some um, contract attorneys for those conflict cases. So uh, the, the office has been moving in that direction um, over the, the course of the past you know, five or seven years. Um, and this is really a huge blow to to all the progress that has been made over those years. Um, Paul's done a great job at bringing in people from, you know, locally from LSU and throughout Louisiana, but also across, across the country um, who came specifically to Lafayette specifically to do this work. And, um, you know, at this point, we're just trying to keep the lights on. So, you know, we live in a state where, Child poverty is one of the most important issues, and roughly a quarter of our children in this state live below poverty, which means their parents are in poverty. So Mm -hmm. effectively, we've got a massive need to do something, one, on the backside of this, but it seems to me that a lot of efforts need to go into raising people and getting them the heck up out of poverty so we don't have the need on the backside for so many public defenders. I could not agree with you more about that. Uh, that's absolutely correct. And, you know, I think, um, you know, ending up in the criminal system is really just uh, that's that's the breakdown. That's that's that's, you know, the end result of a breakdown that starts early, early on in the process. So, um, you know, trying to do trying to address the problems at the criminal level, uh, you know, doesn't go nearly deep enough into addressing the the foundational problems that that create this, you know, the system where Louisiana incarcerates more people per capita than anywhere in the entire world, um, you know, where there are thousands and thousands and thousands of men and women just in this, you know, district alone who are going through the criminal system and just being processed through that system every single year. Um, this really needs to be addressed uh, on a multi, multi-level multi kind of um, holistic approach. And that that includes education, you know, that includes um opportunities for employment and that that really it can't only be addressed in the criminal uh, system. We've only got about a minute left. Uh, Caitlin Graham's our guest today. Caitlin, the, the 200 something people that are incarcerated, mm-hmm. are they just in limbo until the state comes up with the money? I mean, are they just going to sit and rot in jail? At this point, there is no there is no plan as far as what to do with those cases. And it's really it's 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 terrible. I spoke with um, with one young man. He's 18 years old. He is in jail in Lafayette right now. Uh, he, he's not represented by our office because of a conflict. Um, he has a sick mother who he was in charge of taking care of. Um, he had a job at the Dairy Queen that they're trying to hold it for him as, as, as long as possible. But he's just, you know, he's, he's desperate to, to have someone advocate on his behalf. And right now there is no one. Wow. So wow. He's, he's stuck in there for the duration. Yes. That's incredible. Yes. Caitlin, thanks for being with us yeah, today. Thank you so much. She's thank with you. the 15th Judicial District's Public Defense. 